This week, Labor's Stephen Jones was left with egg on his face for tearing into Prime Minister Scott Morrison for meeting with our colleague, Piers Morgan, in the middle of the deadly floods and the Ukrainian invasion. Brisbane is underwater. Lismore is about to be. Southeast New South Wales is bracing for a deluge. Ukraine is under siege. But sure, spend 45 minutes with a talk show host. Now, Jones wrote that message on Monday, and I can confidently say it is completely false. The photo was from the previous week, before the floods or the invasion. Oops. And he still hasn't deleted it. How arrogant and foolish. But the lazy and bitterly anti-Morrison Australian media didn't do a shred of fact-checking and ran with this false narrative. Special shout out to activists at The Guardian, Amy Ramikas, who made furious by the fake news, went on to spread it into the social media ecosystem. That tweet is still up, despite The Guardian's apparent crusade against misinformation in all its forms. I guess that doesn't apply to fake news against conservatives though. And Piers had a field day putting our countrymen to shame, pointing out that not only was it false, but Labor leader Anthony Albanese had met with him the night prior. Hypocrisy, thy name is Jones. And for the beloved Kevin Rudd, a true national treasure, this was also ignored. What on earth is Scott Morrison doing with Murdoch's Piers Morgan? This bloke remains at the centre of an ongoing UK trial over his staff hacking into innocent people's devices to invade their privacy. So much for Morrison, the digital privacy crusader. The British broadcaster was quick to put Rudd in his place. Hi, Kevin. I won't be taking bullying thug lectures from a bloke branded a bullying thug by his colleagues, nor will I take popularity advice from someone kicked out of office by the Australian people after less than three months in your last humiliating tenure as PM. Have a good day. The cranky and petulant Kevin Rudd, who conducts himself more like an angry teenager than a former prime minister on Twitter, will think twice before he picks that fight again. Sophie, what is, your, what is your take on how this all unfolded? Um, I noticed you actually got a retweet from Piers Morgan with, with some of your input, but were you <laughs> surprised at how easily the left fell for this? Look, Piers Morgan uh, was in the country, what a week, and look at all the stir he caused, Jack. I mean, planting this photo online just sent the left into absolute hysterics and a cheap shot at the Prime Minister. But they were so silly to be caught doing this because a short time later, Piers said that actually Mr Albanese also spent uh, the same amount of time with Piers Morgan, which is just highly embarrassing uh, for all those lefties on Twitter, the usual suspects, and Stephen Jones really should remove that tweet. But I think it says more, Jack, about the state of the Australian media, that this is how easy it is to suck in the left, to take a cheap shot at the right, be caught out when it's wrong, and very few of them corrected the record. And good on to Piers Morgan for calling them out. I thought the whole thing was so entertaining and giving us a bit of a, a you know, insight into what Piers is going to have coming once he arrives on Sky News because he's obviously <laughs> setting the agenda by just throwing out a few tweets. It's that easy. It's uh, James, she makes such a good point, doesn't she? Piers brings a bit of star power that I think has been missing from Twitter. You know, I, I used to write it off completely, but I've got to say, if he's going to be um, going to war with <laughs> Kevin Wright every day, oh, I might and... pop back on. Well, Jack, and it's also so just entertaining to see how already, you know, before he even goes to air here in Australia, <laughs> Piers Morgan has already set himself up rent-free in the heads of so many of these lefties, Kevin Rudd, of course, being chief <laughs> among them, because he has this weird, absolute obsession with, you know, News Corp and Sky News and everybody and everything that it touches. He, you know, he's come after me and plenty of other people so many times. But the other thing, you know, that's just ridiculous here is that the politics of it, I think, are going to play really badly for the left, because it's all one thing for people in media world and Twitter world and, you know, Amy Rubika's Guardian world to be going, oh, yeah, ooh, sick burn there, you know, you sure got the right. <laughs> well, most people, most people actually look at this and say, hang on, this is an absolute stitch up. If Labor loses the coming election, it's going to be in no small part due to antics like this, because I'll tell you what, right now, they're still flooding, they're still sandbagging, there's still huge amounts of problems all through New South Wales. Where is Anthony Albanese right now? It's 
Is he up in Lismore helping people, you know, uh, dig their, uh, bail their shops and their homes out from underwater? No. He's in Western Australia trying to shore up votes out there. So is Stephen Jones going to go after Albo for that? I don't think so. I don't think so either. James Morrow, thank you very much for your insights. Anytime, Jack. And Sophie Ellsworth, it's always a pleasure. Likewise, thanks, Jack.